गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स माय नेम इज तुषार कपूर आई एम बैक एंड वेलकम यू ऑल टू सेकंड पार्ट ऑफ द चैप्टर इम्प्रूवमेंट इन फूड रिसोर्सेस एज यू नो वी हैव ऑलरेडी डिस्कस्ड अबाउट द टाइप ऑफ मिनरल्स न्यूट्रिशन एंड इरिगेशन सिस्टम दैट अ क्रॉप रिक्वायर्स टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट वेरियस क्रॉपिंग पैटर्न्स so what are cropping patterns cropping patterns are different ways of growing crops these can be mixed cropping in mixed cropping there is reduced risk and it gives some type of insurance against failure of one or more crops then there are examples of mixed cropping of which type of crops that we can use in this type of thing that are wheat plus gram or wheat plus mustard or groundnut plus sunflower we should ensure that they should have same kind of harvesting period so that they can be harvested easily but what actually is definition of mixed cropping it is growing two or more crops simultaneously on the same piece of land but make sure that there is no definite pattern in which these crops are grown so if we are going to have a definite pattern then we should switch towards the next method that is intercropping during intercropping the advantage is same that the risk is reduced and also we can get more than one type of crop during single time like soybean plus maize or bajra plus lobia are one of the common examples that are used but again what actually intercropping is it is growing two or more crops simultaneously on the same field but make sure that it is in a definite pattern only then it will be intercropping there is one more method that is known as crop rotation and during which the crops are grown in a pre planned succession i think you all have read or heard about crop rotation in your previous classes here you can see some of hyv crop plants that are used in india like for rice wheat maize there are various pulses as well as oil seeds that have been modified to give high yield but these crops have some competitors too these competitors can be like gokro gajar ghas or grass these all are unwanted plants that gets cultivated in field and they are known as weeds they are harmful because they compete for nutrition and water and these weeds are seasonal also like some grows with kharif crops like in kharif season that come by name cholai jungli jowar motha sathi there are various type of weeds that grow in kharif season as well as the cases similar for rabi season i think you will be familiar with some of them like mandosi main one is batua i think you have heard about batua as well as eaten that also then there is hira kuri and wild rot that is also known as jungli jai so these are the weeds but what actually they do they compete for food space and light with the plants also they take up nutrients and reduce the growth of crop see actually what is happening is that we are providing manure fertilizers water and we are providing all type of energy so that the crops can grow and we can sell them or we can provide them to various other pro, uh, persons or for any other purpose but these weeds take up the nutrients from soil so the plant is not getting that much of nutrients that we were supposing that the plant will get in similar way there are insects pest also that can attack the plants but there are different modes in which they can attack firstly 
they can cut the root stem or leaf otherwise they can suck the cell sap the third one is that they can bore into stems and fruits the first category is known as cutters second suckers and third one are borers but what are other things that can cause damage to crops then there are pathogens like bacteria and fungus as well as viruses that can cause disease to the crops here you can see some common indian pests of crop plants i think you have seen one or two also mm -hmm. see now weeds insects and disease can be controlled by various methods and these methods includes use of pesticides which can be herbicide or insecticide as well as fungicides or fungus then mechanical removal third one is using resistant varieties and summer plowing because they generally don't grow during summer then there can be other preventive measures also like proper seed bed preparation timely sowing of crops intercropping crop rotation which means there are various methods so we can protect and we should protect the crops during their phase of growth so that they can give us the desired results that we require and that we want not during the time of growth only we should protect the crop but after harvesting it where we are storing the grains that area is also a point of concern because in india a large amount of loss takes place during storage of grains a few factors that are responsible for loss are biotic factors like insects rodents fungus mites bacteria whereas abiotic factors are inappropriate moisture and temperature in the place of storage but what are these factors going to do to the grains these factors degrade the quality also cause loss in weight as well as poor germinability germinability and discoloration of product all these things conclusively leads to poor marketability of the crop that is grown by hard work and how does we can protect this we can protect this by following some basic things like proper treatment systematic management of warehouse strict cleaning of the produce before storage then proper drying of the produce first in sunlight then in shade and lastly not least fumigation using chemicals that can kill the pest so all these things are required in proper amount so that proper type of steps can be taken place now these things provides us a lot of stress and there are certain examples of the pest of stored grains also and uh, you have i think seen one or two of them that are generally rice moth as well as the beetles i think you have seen them also now this is all about plants what we get from plants how we get from plants and what are the best things that we can do to get the best from them now they are not one of the best source of fat and protein so for this we have to switch to other sources from which we can get fat as well as proteins let's check out some of the nutritional values of animal products here you can see the milk it is from cow has a fat percent of 3.6% protein content of 4% it also contains sugar mineral a large amount of water and various other vitamins similarly you can see that of egg the protein content is very high that is 13% as well as it, it contains vitamin b2 and t same case is for meat 
that is having high protein content that is 21.1 percent and then it contains a large amount of minerals as well as vitamins also the same case is for fish that is having 19 percent of protein 2.5 percent of fat a very large amount of minerals as well as niacin vitamin d and a so this topic will be divided in four parts that is cattle farming poultry farming fish production and beekeeping today we are going to study about cattle farming so cattle farming is and why cattle husbandry is done for see cattle husbandry is done for dairy products drought and labor for agricultural work such as tilling irrigation and carting and also there are dual purpose deeds also but what actually animal husbandry is see the scientific management of animal livestock is known as animal husbandry and in recent time with agriculture animal husbandry has become one of the most important part because of which we can get a large amount of nutrient or nutrient rich food today we will discuss about cattle farming only so what are the cattle breeds generally that are seen in india in india you can see two type of cattle breeds that are cow and buffalo scientific name of cow is boss indicus where the scientific name of buffalo is boss babelis there are two type of categories in them the females that generally produce milk are known as milch animals whereas the ones used for farm labor are called draught animals then there are various kind of breeds that are used like exotic or foreign breeds like jersey brown swiss holstein fenchian they have a very great advantage as they have long lactation period but they do have their shortcoming also as all of these are foreign breeds and generally found in european countries with lower temperature as compared to that of our country so they do require lower temperature for their proper working and living but they do as i have said have their own advantage that is having long lactation period as compared to the indigenous breeds that are indian breeds they are red sindhi saiwal gir they don't have that much good amount of lactation period but they show excellent resistance to the diseases that are commonly found in our area as these are the local breeds see now indigenous breeds is having one advantage and the other disadvantage whereas the case just gets reversed for the foreign breeds as their advantage becomes disadvantage here so we can use mixed breeds these mixed breeds contains the feature of both that is indigenous breeds as well as exotic breeds these improved breeds include various crosses like karan swiss that is cross of brown swiss with saiwal karan fries that is cross of austrian fenchian with thapakar then fries wal that is cross of porcine fenchian with sahiwal these cattle have high lactation period as well as they show excellent resistance to the diseases now moving to the requirements as see if we are having cattle then they do have their own requirements also these requirements includes proper cleaning shelter facilities regular brushing to remove dirt and do sir they should be shelter under well ventilated roof sheds that will protect them from rain heat cold 
then one of the most important thing the floor of the cattle shed needs to be sloping so as to stay dry and to facilitate cleaning then there is balanced ration containing all nutrients in proportionate amount as well as vaccinations are given to farm animals against many major viral and bacterial diseases the requirement list can appear to be a lengthier one but see the type of nutrients that we are getting from them do require this kind of work from us also also if we doesn't give them their proper requirements then the type of product or the quality as well as quantity of product that we are giving will get affected if a cow or buffalo is already suffering from any type of disease then there are two cases the quality of milk will be poor or the quantity of milk will be less in both cases the farmer will suffer loss therefore as we say that precaution is better than cure so we should follow these requirements such as like a uh, act of precaution here then they have their food requirements also these food requirements are of two types there are maintenance requirement which is the food that is required to support the animal to live a healthy life then there are milk producing requirement in which the type of food required for their lactation period and for their proper lactation period other than this these animal feeds should also include roughage which is largely fiber and also concentrates which are low in fiber but contain relatively high levels of proteins and other nutrients so roughage is like food which provides maintenance and which fills up their bucket but the concentrates are the main food that is required by them for their proper lactation for their proper diet for their proper growth and all these things after our this topic that is cattle farming we will study about poultry farming then there will be fish production and lastly there will be bee keeping but this is all for today that is thank you and have a wonderful day ahead enjoy your lockdown period do study carefully sincerely and positively thank you